Okay, is Myth gonna set up the Tetris? Set it up, set it up! No, no! Oh, it hurts, it hurts. All right, so this is pretty crazy. So there's this thing called Twitch Rivals, which has the biggest names on Twitch competing live for huge prize pools. And last year, November, they debuted their first live show since the start of the pandemic in Las Vegas. Streamers got split up into teams of two and competed in a series of challenges throughout the two-day event. The winning team got $20,000, a one-year supply of Doritos and custom arcade cabinets. This thing was a big deal. And for the final day of variety games, the competition bracket had Boomerang Foo in the round of 16, Minecraft in the quarterfinals, Wreckfest in the semifinals, and Tetris Effect connected in the grand final. Best of three, both players had to win one game against their opponent. But hilariously, they don't specify what mode in Tetris Effect connected they'll be competing on. Which is huge because most of the modes in Tetris Effect connected follow the Tetris guideline, which is a set of rules the Tetris company came up with in 2001 to make sure all new versions of Tetris have the same format. Except for the final mode, Classic Score Attack, which uses all the rules from 1989 NES Tetris. No hard drop, multiple piece previews, seven bag, hold pieces, none of that at all. And wouldn't you know it, that's the mode they chose for the event. Now that's the version I'm familiar with. I've been a competitor in and made videos on the NES Tetris competitive scene for the last four years. But until very recently, you had to get all the old 80s era equipment to play it. Tetris Effect Connected is the first official release of Tetris since the guideline was created in 2001 that has a mode with the classic rule set. Meaning that these Twitch stars, even if they've played Tetris before, likely have no idea how this version works. So I'm gonna react to their matches and see how they did. It should be interesting. All right, so the grand finals here, we got two teams, It's Hafu and Dog Dog versus It's Timmy and Myth. It has all come down to the classic Sancho. We're going to Tetris, baby. Heck yeah. We're both going to lose to him. I've heard that <laughs> Timmy is absolutely Cracked at Tetris, and I mean... Is he cracked at classic Tetris, though? One team has to defeat both players on the other side. Both players have to play. Essentially what happens, if you win, that's it. You're no longer able to compete again. So if everyone's confident that Timmy's going to get the win here, Myth is going to have to be the anchor to close it out. So yes, two wins is what you're going to need. You're going to be competing in Speed 7. <laughs> <laughs> speed 7. That's an interesting choice because you've never been able to start at Speed 7 in the World Championships. The lowest you've ever been able to start in competitive matches has generally been level 9. And actually, fun bit of trivia, level 17 starts, which is the same color as level 7, those used to be banned in the World Championships because people don't like the color scheme for those levels. It's hard to see on old TVs. All about the high score. So, Veli, I'm expecting T-spins. I'm expecting big clearouts. Oh. I'm expecting all the Tetra strats to come out here. Okay, so, I mean, these commentators have probably been commentating over a huge variety of video games all weekend, so I'm not faulting them here, but in Classic Tetris, you're not going for the T-spins, you're not going for the big clears, you're just going for as many Tetrises as possible. That's it. Counted down here for the finals. Are they gonna do it? On the grand finals, on the Tetris machine. Let's get into it here on the wall. Count with me. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, six, six. Five, four, three, two, two and one. one. Go! Oh, they didn't say Tetris. Okay, SP's to start. Uh, Hafu sets up the. Oh no, Timmy does not set up the tuck. Ah, uh, I guess he's got to do what he can to stabilize the stack. Uh, would not want to put that line piece vertical. Um, Hafu's board's actually looking good. Timmy needs to fix his parity. Hafu has got to clear up. Ooh. Uh, Hafu's board is not looking good stability-wise. Oh, no, and Timmy looks like he has a bit of a misdrop with that J. It looks like Timmy's not really used to uh, the rotations because he's kind of just throwing pieces around haphazardly. That's something that I would do to set it all up for that. Ah, and Hafu doesn't quite know where to put that J piece. That is a very unfortunate board. There's no great spot for the J piece and the square coming up next. That big line to get the big clear. The big line to get the big clear. <laughs> it is funny, like, cause for people who don't know much about Tetris, it's not immediately obvious that clearing four lines at once is a Tetris, but yeah, that's that's what it's called. 95 to 41, Hafu in the lead. <laughs> 95 to 41, Hafu in the lead. Their only scoring has been push down points so far. Gotta say Timmy's board looking a little rough. And this game is as random as ever. You don't know what to expect. 
This is coming down to- That is true. In classic score attack, the pieces are legitimately random. In modern Tetris, it's guaranteed you will get every piece once every seven pieces. The speed is picking up, folks, here. Who is going to get the first win for oh, the duo? Boy. The speed is not picking up. Uh, it's not going to speed up for a lot of lines. There's just two belly. Half food popping off right now, but take a look at Timmy. Half food popping off after that double. this, and there you go. Just got a lot. Hafu up at least by so much, 2,900 points. <laughs> Hafu's up by so much, 2,900 points. In classic score attack, on the higher levels, Tetrises are worth like 20,000 points. So typically like a normal lead you'll see in a competitive match is like 20,000, 50,000, 100,000. 2,000 points apart is neck and neck. Right now, Timmy, you can't count them out. All it takes is a couple of line clears. That is true. 2,000 point difference. Belly, I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of holes in Hafu's game. You're right, but take a look at There's a lot of holes on both sides. Basically, double what Timmy has, and she's still focused. There's a lot of holes on both sides. Double what Timmy has, 4,000 to 2,000. Hafu has to hold on. Hafu has to get as much points as possible. Calm, cool, and collected. Cliches will soon go out the door because right now it is championship time. 6,500 points. Oh, Timmy just had no idea what to do with that T piece. Will Timmy get the T spin? Oh, he doesn't know how to do the T spin. Ah, oh, that's so tough. It looks like Timmy's really confused on like which way the pieces rotate because I think I saw he was trying to put the T in there, but he just could not get the T oriented in the right direction. Timmy's still in the game though. If he's able to get a line and clear out that large upside down L in the middle, he can capitalize by- The large upside down L in the middle. I guess he's talking about that L dependency in columns two and three. Oh, he's talking about that, that the, <laughs> the large L in the middle. I see it now. But half full, cool it in the other side of the Oh, and that right hang now. of the L that's going to do it. Oh, no. And half who wins. Timmy's gone. Half who. Half who gets the dog. Let's go. The one part of the side is that's the squad. Oh my gosh. The final scores were 4,000 to 8,000. Like a typical semi-pro match in NES Tetris, you can expect to see scores anywhere from like 300,000 to 600,000 in a competitive match. Among the pros, you can see anywhere from a million to two million points. 4,000, 8,000, uh, <laughs> it's a bit low. <laughs> It's just tough when you just have no reference on how to place pieces. A lot of you out there are probably thinking, I'm way better at classic score attack than that. Why can't I participate in a classic score attack tournament with a large prize pool? Well, the great news is, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, now you can. The Honda Fan Cup is an online Tetris Effect Connected tournament using classic score attack. There's a $10,000 prize pool split across four qualifiers in a finale with the qualifiers happening on Sundays in October. There's no PB requirements or skill level pre-checks. Anybody over 18 in the United States, Canada, or Mexico can enter. And it's really easy to sign up. Up. You just go to start.gg slash xbox, pick a day, and then fill out the info to register. Three of the qualifiers will be streamed live on the Classic Tetris Twitch channel. And here's the best part. The top player from each qualifier is going to be a finalist that gets to play one of the top four eligible competitors from the Classic Tetris World Championships this year in the grand finale on October 29th, which will be broadcast on the official Xbox Twitch page. So if you think you have what it takes to compete, which you should, because in Classic Score Attack, anything can happen, head over to start art.gg slash xbox and register today. All right, so back to the video. So it's best two out of three right now. So they, she needs to win another game. What was your strategy? I mean, that was, that was flawless. Well, we got to practice a little. That was flawless. <laughs> well, hey, here, here's the thing. These announcers, they're doing their best to hype this up. Obviously it was not flawless, but I will give Hafu credit after some initial early misdrops. She did maintain her composure. She did burn a bunch of lines at the top. She clutched out the victory with 4,000 points. Well, we got to practice a little on our PCs and with the controller, but actually the controls didn't match up. Yeah, that's, that's rough. If controls don't match up, you just, you can't, half the battle is just putting pieces where you want them to go. It's not even making the decisions. You know, as soon as I realized, okay, I don't have access to saving a piece and I can't even drop my piece. I just said, whatever, don't think about it. Just do your best. I messed up like eight times. I just kept going, kept trying and yeah. 
I'm happy. That's how you do it. That's how you gotta do it. So you just keep pushing on, even if you make mistakes. Like what Hoffer said, like you can't pick up your pieces, you can't insta drop, right? So then uh, that actually like messed me up at the very beginning. And yeah. So it seems that they were really, really uh, confused by the fact that they weren't told ahead of time this was gonna be classic. They thought it was gonna be modern. All right. And then, and what about you, dog? Final words before you go into the last round of the day. I thought it was best of three. They're they're already going into the next match. What the heck? That was it? They just play a couple lines and that's it. <laughs> Again, for the uninitiated, a typical classic Tetris match can last around 230 lines before you hit the level 29 kill screen, which isn't as much of a kill screen nowadays because people can play beyond that. You can see matches hitting 300, 400 lines nowadays. So <laughs> I got just a couple lines. That's tough, man, to lose a match like that. It's all gonna be on Dog Dog. If he ends up losing this, that means he's gonna have to face another match. So that is what's so difficult. It would be him versus Timmy. Exactly, and Timmy's already learned. You heard all the breakdown. Oh, right okay, so it's best of three among the whole team. That makes sense. Three, two, one, Tetris! Oh, all right, Sancho, this is it. Can Myth hold it down for his team against Dog Dog? Okay, they both get the T opening. They get the same piece Myth sets. Has been the competitor uh, in various different games. Okay, so Myth, like uh, both of these Fortnite. boards are okay to start with. Okay, is Dog Dog going for a left well? You just gotta remember, it's all Neither of them have missed drops so far. This is good. Almost feels like a mirror, oh, Myth mirror doesn't match. know what to do with the LBs. Oh, ah! It's hard for me to even tell what Myth was attempting to do here. I guess Dog Dog is just giving up on oh, going for Tetrises. Oh, wait. Dog Dog adjusts the line piece. Great adjustment. Dog Dog going for a Tetris. Myth has a T spin that unfortunately won't really do anything set up. All right, Myth's going to get a double. Dog Dog gets a triple. If these scores are going to be like last game scores, a triple's actually good. Triple's worth like 2,000 points just by itself. So Myth's doing okay, but then- Oh no, Dog Dog! Oh my gosh, <laughs> you can see it in Dog Dog's face too. That is brutal. Hey, you know what? Even the world champs have done that on occasion. The seven-time Tetris world champion Jonas Neubauer did it in 2017, and the announcers called it a diving board strat. So I'll just say jo Dog Dog's going for the diving board strat. Now the question is, does Dog Dog know how to clear this out? But Myth could have a huge comeback here. Myth can set up a center Tetris. Okay, okay, is Myth gonna set up the Tetris? Set it up, set it up! No, no, Myth! Oh, it hurts, it hurts. All Myth had to do is just drop the T-piece right here, and then he could have set that next line piece down there for a Tetris. And given how these games are going, that probably would have won the game because that would have been like 9,000 points or something like that. Speed advancements, nothing crazy. It's not like other Tetris games. Okay, all right, just just take the doubles. Oh, all right, Dog Dog, dog gets a line piece in there. Ooh, a nice dog vertical dog long bar slide. Look, and Dog Dog's gonna get another triple. Nice for Dog Dog. This is okay. Take a look at the right side of your screen. Speed is I mean, I mean both boards are pretty rough right, right now. now oh, I myth. I saw that miss drop with the S piece. So that's another tough thing about classic Tetris. There is no ghost piece. In guideline Tetris, you will see a little ghost of where the piece is gonna drop at the bottom of the screen. So you make sure it's in the right call. That's a score tag doesn't have that. Right, multiple long bar dependencies. Already trying to lead the charge here. He's dog like dog can open this up. He set up two different line spaces here, Belly. Dog dog. That is true. Is line spaces. Right now. That They're called long bar dependencies had. usually in, in the scene. On the side, Myth is this is really close. Still knocked down the blocks, but dog dog start recover. It's not all about Dog Dog. Oh, results. another miss drop from Myth. It's about the score and about survival. And both of these That's true. It is about the score down. and about survival. It's a championship on the line between Dog Dog and Myth. I can't what believe the there's like $10,000 on, on the line with this game. I've never saw a Tetris game so hyped before. <laughs> never seen a Tetris game so hyped before. I mean, it's it's like they have no frame of reference, right? Like, I mean, the thing that makes this hype is that you got famous people playing and it's for a crap ton of money. In the pro Tetris matches, it gets really hyped. Tetris readiness for Adam. Oh my goodness. Oh, no. oh, 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 oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. up by basically 2,000 points. And why does that matter, folks? If both competitors go down at the same time, it will go to the tiebreaker, and that is the high score.
What? Oh my gosh, these commentators, they just don't know any better, but it's so funny listening to their misconceptions. If both players go out at the same time, the tiebreaker is the score? That's not how it works. If Dog Dog were to die here with the lead, Myth would have the opportunity to chase down the score within a two minute window. It wouldn't be an automatic win for Dog Dog. But it looks like Myth is going to have to, okay, Myth gets that clear, but has a dangerous long one to oh no, that L piece, that should be it. Oh no, the early dash loads sliding around. Can't get the S piece over, and that's it. Tops out with 5,800 points. Dog Dog has won after getting 9,000 points. Is that it? Do they win the championships? Let's go, congrats once again. Great game from both teams. Oh my gosh, like that's it. So like, here's the funny thing, like, I remember when YouTube boxing was like this huge thing. I, I remember hearing like some boxer people being like, oh my gosh, this is a mockery of boxing. These guys suck. I'm not familiar with boxing by any means, but I am familiar with Tetris. And after watching this, I guess I can kind of understand where that some of that sentiment from the boxing people might have come from. There's a certain amount of just what the heckness that comes from seeing this huge hyped up tournament with people playing, you know, like they never played Tetris before. But at the same time, I feel like that's completely outweighed by, yeah, you know, obviously they didn't do very well compared to pro Tetris people who have spent hundreds or thousands of hours practicing this game. But it was really entertaining to see well-known Twitch streamers give it a shot. It's like, you know, your favorite hobby. It's cool to get to see celebrities try it. And I've totally been in this situation before as well that these Twitch streamers were in. I did a reaction video on my channel to Tritris. And even though I have all this experience in Tetris, it didn't help me at all in Tritris. But you know, it's okay. It's fun to try new things. It's really fun to see that they chose Tetris, much less classic score attack for the highest champion round here. And who knows, maybe this got a few people interested in checking out Tetris and they ended up finding our scene. What? What a match, and we have our first ever Twitch Rivals Ultimate Champions. The other cool thing about this too is that uh, I, I believe uh, Hafu and Dog Dog are married. They just got married last year, so this would have been right after they got married. So congratulations, they got married, and their first year of marriage will be celebrated with an endless supply of Doritos. Can't imagine a better start. So that was my off the cuff reaction. I was doing this just for fun and entertainment, but there is a serious Tetris player in the community that is taking this to the whole next level. If you're in the classic Tetris community, you may be familiar with Alex Kerr, also known as Kataru. He's made the finals of the classic Tetris World Championships twice. He's also a grandmaster in multiple versions of TGM. He has broken down and analyzed this event to an absolute T, no pun intended. <laughs> and he's going to be uploading his full-fledged Tetris super expert analysis to his YouTube channel. And I don't know if he'll have it uploaded yet at the time of putting this out, but you can either click on screen to watch it or click to check out his channel and subscribe to see it when it comes out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.